Good morning, Team Anastasis. Happy Tuesday. I hope you all had an awesome snow day learning day yesterday. I know that for some of you, you woke up and you're like, yes, snow day. And you, your first thought was that means no school. And like a lot of things this year, that is one thing that has changed. And the reason it's changed, it's not forever, but it is for this year. Um, the reason that changed is because every year um, schools have to be in session a certain number of hours, a certain number of days. And so schools build in snow days knowing that if we have to take, we live in Colorado, if we have to take a day off, then we still have, you know, those days kind of accounted for. Um, and so every year we build in a certain number of days that if they are a snow days, it doesn't affect the count of the uh, official account of all of the days that we're in person. But this year, because of COVID, if you remember, we started school a week later than we were originally going to start. And we also moved our start time every day back a little bit so that the teachers can clean and make sure that the classrooms are um, sanitized and ready for you every single day, that everything you touch has been cleaned. And so that's why our start time moved a little bit. Well, because of that, it impacts our number of days and we can fix that a few different ways. One, we can make our snow days into remote learning days like we did. Um, and that seems like a really good solution for us because the other alternatives are shortening holidays, uh, holiday breaks that we have, or it could impact and we go further into the summer. And so we thought better to use our snow days as learning days than to move our calendar along. Um, and we thought we'd like that time in the summer more than, uh, than right now. So that's why we learned yesterday. Um, I don't know about you, but I was feeling really grateful that we have the ability to still meet and still learn together. I know um, that it is different and maybe your expectations were set to something else and then that can be a letdown of expectations. But the reality is a lot of places in the world, um, kids don't get to go to school every day and would so love to go to school because it means that they have the ability to get an education, to get a job someday. And uh, it, there are places in like South America where if you don't have a pair of black shoes, if you don't own a pair of black shoes, um, that you can't go to school. So that's a requirement to go to school. And of course, if you, your family doesn't have money to afford a new pair of black shoes, that impacts your ability. There's places in the world where girls can't go to school and get an education because they're in charge of collecting water um, for their families. They don't have running water in their house. And so they have to go to a well or to a, a so water source and collect these jugs of water and walk them back to make sure their families have enough water. And they don't have the ability to go to school and, and um, provide for their families in that way. So there's all kinds of reasons that kids don't get to go to school. And I think it's easy for us to really um, take for granted. We talked about that a few uh, parables ago, just the way that we take things for granted because it's our normal. Um, and it's important, I think, to remember that it's not everybody's normal and that we truly are so blessed and so lucky to be able to come and be at school together. Um, I know a lot of you uh, in the intermediate and junior high are working on, um, you're just getting started with the inquiry block where we are in place and time. And part of that is stories, which is why we're going through parables. But um, if you have not read The Promise of a Pencil, it is such a good book. I uh, highly recommend it. I think that it is in Team Tiernan's class. But if you would like a copy and you can't find it, come find me and I'll, I'll buy you a copy because it's such a great book. Um, but it tells this great story of um, this, this guy who's traveling around the world and he stops in this um, poor village. And I believe it's in, in South America that he stops in this village and, um, and he meets these kids and they're taking pictures and doing things together. And he asks one of the kids, like, if you could have anything, what, what would it be? And he's expecting the kid to say like, candy or uh, you know a new soccer ball or something to play with or um, money, um, something like that. And the kid surprises him and says, if I could have anything, I would just want a pencil. And so he takes out and gives this, this kid his pencil. And you would have thought this kid won the lottery. Um, so he started this whole ministry um, called The Promise of a Pencil. It's a really cool story. So if you have a chance, um, definitely pick that up. 
Speaking of stories, we're going to continue today with another parable. This one is found in Matthew chapter 20, and it starts in verse 1. And this is kind of a strange parable. It doesn't make sense the first time we read it through. So I'm actually going to read it once, and then I'm going to encourage you to, with your classmates to talk about what could be happening in this parable, what, what might be going on here. And then when we talk on Thursday in our metanoia, we'll... Um, We'll go back to this parable and talk about kind of what I saw in it. It'll be interesting to see if we pull the same things out. So uh, chapter 20, it's called a story about a vineyard. And Jesus is telling the story and he's talking about um, this vineyard he, he, that doesn't exist, right? This is a me metaphor, a parable, a story to help people understand. And in this particular instance, um, Jesus starts the story by saying, for the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. So Jesus in telling this story is illustrating, he's trying to help us understand better what the kingdom of God is like. And the kingdom of God, anytime you read that in, um, in the gospels, uh, is really Jesus trying to help us understand how God has ordered the world and what his intent in the world is, how we're supposed to be in community together and live together. So that's the basis for this story. So he says, for the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out early one morning to hire workers for his vineyard. A vineyard is a little bit like a farm. And it says he agreed to pay the normal daily wage and sent them out to work. And the normal daily wage at the time, a living wage was uh, called a denarius. Um, and I don't know, I can't remember if it says that specifically in the story, but it was, you'd get it, you'd earn a denarius. It would be enough to like feed your family and take care of your family for a day. So at nine o'clock in the morning, he was passing through the marketplace and saw some people standing around and doing nothing. So he hired them, telling them he would pay whatever was right at the end of the day. At noon, and again around three o'clock, he did the same thing. So he goes back to the marketplace. He already has people who he has hired at 9 a.m., and they're already back working at the vineyard. And then he goes back to the marketplace at noon and again at three o'clock, and he hires people saying the same thing, and he brings them back to his vineyard to work. And then it says at five o'clock, that evening, he was in town again and saw some more people standing around. He asked them, why haven't you been working today? Which is kind of a strange question because at five o'clock, you're getting towards the end of the working day, right? This in Jesus time, when it's dark, it's dark. There's no more light. You can't work anymore. And so he would have known these people standing around at five o'clock aren't working because they didn't get hired. Um, so it's kind of a funny question that the estate owner asks. He says, why haven't you been working today? And in 2020 language, we would be like, uh, duh, we didn't get hired. But what they reply, um, because no one hired us. The owner of the state told them, then go out and join the others in my vineyard. That evening, he told the foreman who was in charge of the workers um, to call the workers in and pay them, beginning with the last workers first. So the, he calls in the, the workers that hadn't worked all day. They were the five o'clock workers. And he says, um, when those hired at five o'clock were paid, each received a full day's wage. So even though they were only hired at the end of the day, he calls them in and he pays them as if they've been there the entire day. When those hired earlier came to get their pay, they assumed they would receive more. So probably those working out in the field are like overhearing this and they're like, oh my gosh, the guys who just got here got paid a full day's wage. We're going to make a ton of money today, right? They're thinking, we worked longer. We're going to make a lot of money. Um, but they too were paid a day's wage. When they received their pay, they protested. So they start complaining about the pay that they have been given. And they said, those people worked only one hour, and yet you've paid them just as much as you paid us who worked all day in the scorching heat. He answered one of them, friend, I haven't been unfair. Didn't you agree to work all day for the usual wage? Take it and go. I wanted to pay this last worker the same as you. Is it against the law for me to do what I want with my money? Should you be angry because I am kind and generous? 
And then Jesus says, and so it is many who are the first now will be last then, and those who are last now will be the first then. So this is an interesting story. And if you're like, uh, I, I am, the first time I read this story, you're like, hold on, that's not fair. The guys who got there first should get more than the guys who just worked one hour. That's not fair at all. Um, so this is an interesting story that Jesus tells. He tells this story that seems really unfair. Uh, and he starts it out by saying that this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. So uh, your job now is to talk um, together, maybe reflect a little bit about what's happening in the story. Why do we think that um, Jesus is telling the story? Sometimes a good context clue, and here's a key, is to read the chapter before and the chapter after to see like what's the context that Jesus is telling the story in. Um, and if you go one chapter before, you'll see a parable that we've already talked about, about a rich man. So um, it might be interesting to look at some context clues and see like what's going on around Jesus before he tells this parable about the vineyard, this story about the vineyard. Um, so I hope you have a really wonderful day. I'm glad to be back together again. Um, Thursday, we will go back through this. Friday, of course, is Monster Mash, Birthday Bash, Pumpkin Palooza. Um, talk about not fair, having a full day to just celebrate and have fun together sounds pretty great to me. And um, maybe not fair as a school day, but we're all about not fair sometimes. So I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday and we will see you on Thursday.